name is Otaviano Canuto, and I'm a senior fellow at the Policy Center for the New South. This is the 19th of a series of short videos dealing with subjects covered in my recent book, Climbing a High Ladder, Development in the Global Economy. Today, we illustrate how gender equality supports economic growth and development. Gender inequality in terms of uh, access to education, health, formal sector employment and income remains a significant constraint to growth in many countries. Although near parity has been achieved in primary school enrollment in many countries, progress towards greater equality in secondary schooling has been slower. In some regions, Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, secondary enrollment gaps have widened. Despite progress in recent years, Women and girls account for six out of 10 of the world's poorest and two thirds of the world's illiterate people. In today's low and middle income countries, the labor force participation rate for women remains low and large pay differentials continue to prevail between men and women. You may recall from our video on the pandemic that the negative impact of the crisis has been relatively higher on women. Today, we focus on the other side of this relationship between growth and gender, that is to say, on how gender inequality of opportunities negatively affects the economy. And reducing gender inequality can boost, can affect economic growth in very surprising ways. Let me give you an example. Most analysis of infrastructure investment focus on the ways it can lift growth by reducing the time and resources wasted in production and transportation. However, its gender asymmetric effects in poor countries are less well known. More and better access to rural roads, water and power grids, reduce the time mothers allocate to household chores and raise the time they have available to allocate to work outside a home, to uh, uh, search for human capital accumulation, and or child rearing. More time given to child rearing leads to improved health in both childhood and adulthood. Crucially, the increase in time devoted to human capital accumulation raises women's bargaining power, which translates into a stronger family preference for girls' education and children's health as well as an increase in the average share of family income spent on children and a weaker preference for current consumption. And this is illustrated by the fact that uh, the Brazilian conditional cash transfers uh, go to the women in the uh, in a household. Uh, C, Brazilian conditional cash transfers are small amounts of money the government distributes directly to very poor households on condition that their children attend school and are vaccinated. And the money goes to the women of the household. Do you know why? Because research undertaken in the 90s and later confirmed in other countries showed an increase in babies' height and weight when women have more power over household income. Greater control over household resource by women can strengthen an economy where poverty dominates as spending patterns tend to be shaped in ways that benefit children. There is also strong evidence that improvements in women's education and health are associated with better outcomes for their children. In the long run, the economy gains from better education and health of children when becoming adults. And, uh, and there is also uh, to take into account the productivity effect of uh, reducing gender inequality of opportunities. The, uh, the World Bank in, uh, in, in the uh, World Development Report of 2012, at the time when I was uh, the vice president at the World Bank, uh, among my departments, I had the gender equality department uh, we, th that report uh, is estimated that labor productivity could rise by up to 25% in some developing countries if 
barriers to women working in certain sectors or occupations were scrapped. The report pointed out, for instance, that maize yields would rise by almost one sixth in Malawi and Ghana if women farmers were given the semi access as men to fertilizers and other inputs. Some aspects of gender inequality in developing economies, like educational enrollment and labor force participation, have diminished during the last few decades. Formal rights and constitutional guarantees for women have advanced in some countries. However, there is still much scope to boost economic growth through policies oriented to reducing inequality. Uh, for instance, some legal barriers uh, there still remain, uh, uh, let's say, uh, obstacle to higher gender equality. Uh, access to credit. In Africa, for instance, women receive 1% of total credit going to agriculture, although they represent a majority of workers in the sector. And, uh, and, and women's full participation in the labor force and earning potential is limited by formal and informal gender specific barriers in nearly every country. This includes legal barriers to employment and earning opportunities affecting over 2.7 billion women globally. As the, the Women, Business and the Law uh, data and research shows, uh, and this is depicted in the picture. This is a, a, a World Bank report that is done every year accompanying the, the progress or lack of in, in the evolution in that regard. According to also uh, another uh, IMF staff study uh, from 2018, despite progress, female labor force participation remains lower than that of men's, with no advanced or middle income economy having reduced the gender gap below seven percentage points. And indeed, uh, potential growth uh, would benefit from uh, a, a better picture in terms of, uh, of uh, gender equality. Uh, the, the International Labor Organization showed that uh, uh, women are less likely to participate in the labor market and are more likely to be unemployed in most parts of the world, with significant potential GDP growth increase across the world if participation rates were closed by only 25%, as the, the estimates in the chart show to you. In addition, gender wage gaps are high and women are overrepresented in the informal sector and among the poor. As a result of gender specific barriers, the World Bank estimates show that women account for less than 40% of global human capital wealth with global losses amounting to $160 trillion in wealth because of difference in lifetime earnings between men and women. The uneven playing field between women and men comes at a significant economic costs as it hampers productivity and weighs on growth. Also a research uh, by McKinsey uh, back in 2016 uh, show that the share of women's care work that goes uncompensated amounts to an estimated value of $10 trillion or 13% of global GDP. In evidence of another report by McKinsey uh, uh, from uh, 2018, further documents that the lack of parity for women in the workforce, including in wages, career growth opportunities, and in the leadership positions also hurts business and economic growth. And look at these figures presented uh, in a study done by the, uh, the IMF, by Jonathan Ostry and some colleagues, uh, showing at uh, trying to estimate exactly what would be the impact of closing gaps to women's economic participation by reducing barriers to women in the workplace and as they would significantly boost welfare and growth. Uh, those are the estimates that they uh, uh, present in their, in their study. And also equal access to inputs would raise the productivity of female owned companies. 
According to the World Bank's reports on women business and law that I referred before, women in many parts of the world still face discriminatory laws and regulations at every point in their economically active life. Globally, over 2.7 billion women are legally restricted from having the same choice of jobs as men. And in 59 economies, no laws exist on sexual harassment at work, leaving more than 500 million women unprotected. Additionally, in 75 economies, women's property rights are constrained. And in five countries, women are not allowed to register a business in the same way as a man. Women's financial inclusion is also impacted by legal barriers. In 62% of countries, no laws exist to prohibit gender-based discrimination in the financial service. And still today, the World Bank research shows that women are accorded only three quarters of the legal rights that men enjoy globally, constraining their ability to get jobs or start businesses, businesses and make choices that are best for them, their families, and their communities. On the other hand, where women have equal opportunities to access jobs, more women work and earn relative to men. And where they have access to property, they can leverage finance to start and grow businesses. Over the last 10 years, considerable progress has been made in improving laws and regulations to promote women's economic inclusion. This includes, for example, 35 countries that implemented legal protections against sexual harassment at work, protecting nearly 2 billion more women than a decade ago. 22 economies have that removed restrictions on women's work, reducing the likelihood that women are kept out of work in certain sectors of the economy. And 13 economies introduced laws mandating equal remuneration for work of equal value. But much faster progress is needed if gender equality is to be achieved in the next 10 years. According to uh, uh, the Global Gender Gap Report of 2018, uh, uh, pre prepared by the World Economic Forum, at current rates of progress, it may take another 202 years to close the economic gender gap globally. And as I, I, I argued, gender inequality is a strong deterrent to prosperity. Now, you will find a discussion on development through gender equality in chapter 20 of my book that you can find on those places on the slide. Next, in the final video of this series on my book, we, uh, we approach the state of arts uh, with respect to globalization and the rivalry uh, among countries. Stay tuned.